Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hi DIY friends, happy new year! Welcome back to my channel. I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood DIYer, and it has been a while. Like, it feels like it's been forever. Probably two weeks, but it feels like it's been forever. Over the holidays, I finally got time to take a little bit of a break, and I got really thinking about how I wanted to structure this channel, how I wanted to create content that was best for me and for all of you to be our best creative self. I have this belief that creativity is not something that can be taught. It is not a skill set, it is a feeling, it is emotional connection to who you are deep down inside and I never want anyone to ever feel that someone is more creative than somebody else or someone is better at DIYing than someone else. Those feelings, those emotions, we don't need them in 2021. We need positivity and I need you to remember that creativity is inside you. So whatever creative beast you have inside you, I want you to embrace that this year and celebrate it with me because what I realized is that I needed to celebrate that creative beast inside me a lot more on this channel because I have a feeling you guys are going to be quite shocked at what I'm capable of doing when that creative beast is released you know <laughs> you're gonna see a little bit of change on this channel not much I mean I'm still going to be making can I make it for cheaper I'm still gonna be making pictures made me do it I'm still gonna be making homemade home but I think I'm going to be focusing a lot of my creative energy on that creative beast inside me letting that person out and sharing it with you because I have a of really cool ideas that are weird and unique and strange and maybe you'll like it maybe you won't I don't know but hopefully I can entertain you hopefully I can make you laugh and encourage you to release that inner creative beast inside you and motivate you to try new things think outside the box because I think in 2021 we all need to lift ourselves up and embrace our creative inner self so that we can stay positive and and keep on keeping on. But in the meantime, let's jump into this new episode of Homemade Home, a series where I share my fun and adventure making over my 150 year old home. Today, we are focusing on my front entryway because I figured what better way to enter 2021 than to enter a home that I actually enjoy. So without further ado, let's jump into this entryway makeover. Editor, roll the tape, boop. Not a dumb idea, I swear. This entryway, yeah, it's not terrible by any means, but it's not great either. It's a small entryway, the color palette consists of light shades of gray on the walls, yellowy beige floral accent wallpaper, which you know, I don't dislike if it was in another space. It's got light gray faux wood vinyl flooring, a small closet for jackets and boots, which is full of post-moving chaos mad, and a ceiling light that really isn't my cup of tea. Beyond that, this space also connects to my studio space on the left when you walk in, which consists of no door to segregate it and an entryway to the kitchen on the right. So there's a lot of travel through this area. I don't want to focus too deeply on the current decor sitch because a lot of the items in this front entryway have been like temporary. Like right now it has a mirror hanging on a pre-existing hook across from the door which is a big no-no if you believe in the power of feng shui which I do. So this needs to change. There is also a small bench underneath to sit on so we're just going to get rid of it in this space. And a oh so not pretty floor mat for the winter times ahead. So let me tell you, my goal for this space is to just give it a simple refresh and upgrade from where it currently is at. As you know, my studio, if you've seen my home tour and any of my other videos, you know that my studio is completely slanted. Well, a lot of those characters play into the front entryway. Basically everything on that side of the house is a little funky. Jeff and I made the decision that we have a two year plan that in two years we're gonna have enough money to be able to basically just demo that 
that entire side of the house. There are some things that I'm willing to invest in to make the next two years very uh, livable. There's a lot of things that I would do to this space that would be different than what you're gonna see in this video. But I think what I did, and hopefully you all agree, will make it better and much nicer and presentable and livable to be in for the next two years until we can rip it down. Let's call it the path of least resistance. To begin this mini makeover, it was out with the old and in with the prep, removing that old wallpaper that was previously there. Bye bye faded floral wallpaper, it's been a decade. Second to that, I got the entire space clean from any dirt, dust, and grime. I always call this the unsexy but necessary part of DIY. Now, I'm sure you all saw this coming. I'm starting to feel like a bland, broken record, but as my base, I opted for the bare paint color Silky White. This was actually leftover paint from my opulent office makeover I did for Stephanie last fall. So not only was I using paint I already have, I just genuinely love using white as a base for a space so that I can inject color and personality through accent pieces later. But not to worry, my DIY friends, there are spaces in my home coming up this year that will not be white. This space included in that, this is my office that I'm sitting in right now and it is going to be one colorful space. So just hang in there for one more white space because I swear we're gonna get real fancy up in here. But for now, we're painting it white, a beautiful, warm white, may I add. And not only did it make the space feel fresh, it really did make it feel bigger. So much fresher, wow. It looks really good though. Just really happy. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to paint the door yet because we're going on a field trip. And an exciting field trip it was because I was heading outside the city to an antique shop called Legacy. DIY friends, Legacy is one of my all-time favorite places to visit. They curate beautiful vintage antiques and building materials. They have hardware, lights, baskets, tubs, furniture pieces, oh my god, just everything. You could spend hours going through every crevasse of that place, but today I was there on a mission. It's so cold in the basement here. I can see my breath coming out from underneath my mask. Please. <sighs> <laughs> Sweet bit chilly down here. I was on the hunt for a front door replacement, something more vintage looking, something that would feel more in line with my little farmhouse, and second to that, hopefully a multi glass pane door that would be used to finally segregate the art room from the main entrance, but still let light pass through. So many doors, oh my gosh. I tell you, I looked at a lot of doors in that space, but it would appear that I was not going to close the deal. But I tell you, I was going to keep my options open. <laughs> no. So I gave it one more shot at the restore that was close by and would you believe it? It was there I found the studio entryway door of my dreams. It was a beautiful dark blue. It had 12 glass panes in it and it was the right size. Literally the vision I had in my head. So the day wasn't a total bust. I also found a second door at the restore. This was for a completely separate space, but either way, that was a very successful door trip and uh, I was really happy. But because I didn't find a new front door, that night I lightly sanded down and taped off my entryway door and decided to paint it the bare color green eucalyptus in satin. Yes, the same color as my Ikea hack apothecary cabinet. Look at me reusing so much paint for this entryway. But I really did love the color. It is so warm and earthy and I knew it would create such an inviting feeling in this space. This looks so good. The next day I had tasked Jeffrey to build the door frame for me. While he did that, I decided to get started on my own little DIY project, which was my console table slash coat rack thing. Yes. To build my coat rack, I decided to treat myself and went with oak lumber. I normally go for a pine because it's more affordable. Oak certainly costs a pretty penny, but the pros to choosing oak is that it is a hardwood, meaning it is a stronger, denser lumber type, and it's going to be less prone to scratching and denting. Not only that, it just means there is a good chance that this piece will last a really long time. I knew this piece was going to be in a high traffic area, so using 
using oak seemed like a good investment in my books. Plus, oak is just beautiful. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> my design was quite simple for this. I used a 1x6 for the shelf, which would act as a console table for keys and everyday entryway items, and a 1x4 piece for the bottom where I would add hooks for everyday jackets and bags. I simply secured these two pieces together by creating pocket holes in the back, adding a bit of wood glue, and securing it together with hardwood pocket hole screws. And this was the first time I've ever had a chance to use the hardwood screws with the Craig Jig Kit, so it was an exciting day. I can strum a tune, you know what I'm saying? But I can't like... I then used a small drill bit to create my screw holes and finished it with countersink holes so that my screws would sit flush to the board. Just give it a nice clean look. And from there I cleaned up my board with a light sand and proceeded to test three different stains on an off cut. Now oak will naturally give you a more ready look so I had to keep this in mind when staining my piece. I tried early American, dark walnut, and my typical special walnut. I decided on special walnut first but after I stained the whole piece I realized it was still way too red so I ended up applying the dark walnut on top to give me the look that I was happy with. Sometimes it's all about trial and error but eventually you will get the look you want. You just gotta be patient. You've been staring at that wall for a while. <laughs> yeah. Guess we're not putting a door up today. But we do sure do have a hole in our wall there, Bob. That is correct. Yep, no door frame that day. But while I waited for my stain to dry, I did have time to get started on another DIY project, which was my new unique sitting bench for this entryway. I wanted to show you guys what I was able to find on Facebook Marketplace. These two beautiful tractor seats. Do you love them? Because I am obsessed. So we're gonna put these aside because there's a bigger plan for this later. Goodbye. So essentially, I saw these tractor seats on Facebook Marketplace and thought to myself, how cool would these be to turn them into a little sitting bench in this entryway, you know, and then add a little base using industrial pipe. I'm like, this is so cool. I just had to make it happen. So to build my bench, I sourced one 12 inch pipe, four eight inch pipes, four T-bars, two reducing couplings that let you connect two different size pipes, six threaded pipe connectors, four flanges, and two pieces of five by five lumber to act as my seat bases. Now I'm showing you a mix of black iron and galvanized pipes. Ideally, I would have gone all galvanized, but my hardware store was a bit slim pickings, but it was okay because I was gonna be spray painting them anyways. So first step was to clean all the pipes. For this, I was using a Windex because this kind of cleaner won't corrode the metal. And from there, I was able to assemble the entire base ready to be spray painted tomorrow. Very cool, right? I was supposed to start DIYing a long time ago and I just can't get there today. <laughs> I feel so cold. It's been raining the last couple days and I'm just like, not there. And now Jeffrey's all like, ooh, I'm all gonna start this frame and get it done today and be all like super motivated. And now I'm just like, not. Okay, I'm gonna finish my coffee and then we'll go. But I finally did get motivated and it was on this day I planned to get many small projects done. First one being that I spray painted both my tractor seats and pipe frame in the color Farmhouse Black. Very fitting for this little home. And yes, I picked this black spray paint because of the name. You got me marketing, okay? I went back and forth about whether or not I wanted to leave the seats red or black, but I still stand behind my decision or sit on my decision. <laughs> That's right, I sit on my decision. And second to that, I got started on my DIY boot tray for wet boots. The challenge is, is that the biggest boot we have in this house is that boot. And how wide is that? That's like 12 feet, give or take, or 12 inches. Yeah, my foot is 12 feet. Yeah, 12 feet, plus a little extra. We're looking at like 14. No one with bigger feet is allowed to come over. You can't have friends with big feet. So then, your boots together, 
yeah, like a good 10 inches. Okay. If we did where your boots have to line up side by side like this way, we might be able to fit quite a few boots here. So I'm gonna go 10 and a half by three feet. You got a solid like four pairs of boots that can probably go on this thing. I built this boot tray out of scrap OSB board I had in my she shack. My goal was to keep this mini project stupid simple. So I measured and cut out my bottom and all four sides of this tray from the same piece of wood and secured them together using one inch brad nails. <laughs> From there, I provided it with a quick sanding and to match my tractor seat bench, I painted it using the same farmhouse black spray paint. At this point, the seats were dry, so I finished them off with a matte clear sealer and did the same with the tray when it was dried as well. Wow, look at that. There's no more hole. Look at you go. Yeah. Yep, I can't wait. And last, this was a winter boot tray, so I decided to recycle the old crummy black mat we had pre-existing in the entryway and cut it down to size to fit inside my tray. Felt like this was a better way to recycle it than just simply throwing it away because I didn't need it anymore. And as a last task to this day, I got a beautiful matte finish on my coat rack, and when that was dry, I added six black hooks that kind of resembled the look of an octopus, I'm not gonna lie. Mm, little octopuses. I did want to go a little more farmhouse with my hooks, but ultimately these hooks were the right color that I wanted. They were low profile, they were affordable, and they offered two hooks for the price of one, and that's exactly what I wanted. So let's talk about that entryway floor. I always knew that light gray faux wood vinyl couldn't stay. It was just not my style, but it took me a while to figure out what I really wanted to do with it. I've done a lot of ripping away lately, Yeah, so I thought, why not just paint over top of it? I already had the paint, I already had the sealer, I didn't really like the floor, and it only had to last for two years. So this just felt like the perfect opportunity to pull out something I've been waiting to use for a real long time. I've been sitting with this beautiful stencil for probably about a year now, and I have been dying to stencil something with it, and I think this is the time. The time has come to use the beautiful stencil. I tell you though, I find it hilarious because as I was working on this front entryway, Drew from Lone Fox had released his front entryway video to which he was doing a very similar floor tile style as mine and I was thinking, no friggin' way. I was floored. So I DM'd him and I was like, no Drew, no. How dare you use the same tile type as me? So we had a good laugh about it. I will link that video down below. I'm sure you guys have all already seen it, but if you haven't and you are looking for a more renter-friendly version of this front entryway floor that I'm about to do, go check that out. To start on my stenciled floor, first I started with a primer coat and this did propose some challenges for many reasons. First of all, Pup Up was really not happy with me. Then once again, using paint I had in my paint stash, I used the Bare Color Bit of Sugar in flat to paint the entire floor a nice crisp white. I also painted the little step up into the art room. No more gray faux wood vinyl for me. Very exciting. I am going to officially start the stenciling on the floor. The white actually ended up needing three coats, which was insane. And now I'm like terrified because I don't want to walk on the white and get it mucky. So I've come up with a solution. I'm going to put bags on my feet. Uh -huh. More precisely, I'm going to put dog poop bags on my feet. Not a dumb idea, I swear. Listen, I thought the dog poop bags on my feet were brilliant, okay? Creative brilliance right there. It was just too cold to go bare feet at that time, and listen, everything else that I owned would track dog hair through it, so this was my only solution. It's my only solution. Now, the last time I stenciled, I had that bleeding issue underneath, and you guys mentioned to do an all-purpose spray adhesive on the back. So, learning from my rookie mistakes, I went into this stenciling round with two 
dog begged feet forward. So using black chalk paint and a foam roller, I began removing as much paint as I could from the foam roller and applied many smaller dry coats to avoid any bleeding. From there, working between two stencils, I just lined up the stencil and kept working my way along. I did make sure the stencil previous was dry before applying the new stencil on top, so this did take a bit of time. Now, I didn't end up recording myself doing the entire floor. I actually ended up doing this over the course of many days, but I will tell you this. The stencils still did bleed a lot. If you're going to be stenciling, yes, the spray adhesive does work, but what they don't tell you is you need to put the spray adhesive on the back every single time you go to reuse the stencil every single time. Second to that, if they tell you to use a foam brush roller, throw it out. I ended up switching over to a three millimeter nap roller and this changed everything. The sponge brush, I guess, would like push down and absorb underneath. I don't know, but I had way better results with three millimeter nap one. It was a long, stressful journey, let me tell you, but this is how the floors turned out. <gasps> dun, 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 Check it out. Guys, are you flabbergasted as me? This took forever. Days, I tell you, days. So, we need to seal it all together. So I have a wet lock sealer. We're gonna do it. Hopefully it'll be fine. Oh, you think I wasn't gonna do this again? Oh, yes I am. Do these talking about some smell? Are these scented? But if I don't want any dust and debris, I gotta do this because it's the only way I know how to keep it out. And it works. So as I began to apply the sealer, I got into the corner when I suppose I ran into a bit of paint that was still wet, even though it had been six hours, so I'm not sure how that happened, but basically panic ensued. I had sealer everywhere, I had paint that was smudged. I was able to fix the smudge and finish out the floor in my cold, bare feet. The things we do for DIY, but I did end up doing two coats of this and it was completely sealed and uh, I think it turned out all right. It was the final day and like all final days, it was finally time to get the space together. First, I got my shelf up on the wall. It looked so lovely, that oak is simply divine. Next up, I got a brand new mirror hung up. This was a beautiful 30 inch gold frame mirror from the Home Depot and I think it looked marvelous. It's me, yeah, damn me. I think I need to go back to work. What? <laughs> I replaced the old ceiling light with a beautiful modern yet kind of vintage ceiling light. I scored this beauty from Canadian Tire, so anyone not from Canada, sorry. But I will see if I can find something similar to link in my description if you love it. This new light made such a difference for the space, big fan. I also ended up picking up a new matte black door handles for both the front door, the closet door, and the new studio door. I just ended up spray painting the lock on the front door to match and save cost and installed all the door handles. And I finally got my new bench seat secured to the wall. I like it. Good job, mate. It also spins. What? Which I like. It spins? Stop spinning it. I feel like you're gonna break it. This feels good. Look, we can both sit on it. It feels sturdy. Yeah, you got lots more work to do. Yeah. Give me lunch though. Yeah, dog also. Dog's always hungry. Okay, I'll cut out the pizza. Okay. Oh. You can sit outside now. Okay. Moving on and after a pizza lunch, I hung up this lovely chalkboard that will be my new welcome message art piece when you first walk in. Added in my boot tray and from there, it was all about the finishing touches that really made this space feel extra homey. And there we go. With a bit of DIY effort, my entryway was completely transformed from bland and uninviting to a unique, stylish, one-of-a-kind functional space. I even sprinkled in a few Cricut created elements, some cute farmhouse finds, and a faux chalk painted embellished bowl to hold my keys to make this space so much fun to walk into now. 
All the materials and projects are linked in my description box. Of course, if you're not already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any new episodes this 2021. Thank you so much for watching. As always, stay creative, stay positive, and keep on DIYing. Bye-bye.